Hey everyone, Alan Pan here. This is part one of making the lightsaber. In this video, I'll show you how I built the fuel chamber for the real burning lightsaber. Now, this is an incredibly dangerous and frankly stupid thing to build, especially if you're a beginner. There are many incompatible substances in this build, and the materials used here were meticulously researched and chosen at each step for good reason. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Alright, let's get started. First, you'll need a quarter inch hose adapter. I got mine from Home Depot. We'll remove this O-ring and we're going to solder these two parts together. Brush flux onto the mating surfaces and don't be shy with the flux. You should use more than you see here. Next, I used a paper clip to hang the two parts together. Then I used a butane torch to heat the parts, but it was a little too cold. A propane torch may be better. Make sure your solder joint goes all the way around. When you're done, clean the adapter with a wet paper towel and set it aside. Next, you'll need a cheap butane pencil torch. I got this one from Harbor Freight, but any cheap generic pencil torch should do. We're going to use this valve for pressurizing the lightsaber fuel chamber. Unscrew the butane valve from the bottom with a small flathead screwdriver. The valve should fit almost perfectly into the hose adapter. We're going to use JB Weld to glue the valve in place. Use a medium grit sandpaper to prepare the inside surface of the hose adapter. Then use poster tack or a similar material to plug up the holes of the valve to keep epoxy from getting in. Mix the JB Weld, and then coat the inside of the hose adapter. Then coat the outside of the valve, making sure to get in all the threads. Once the valve is in place, you can pull the poster tack off. If you accidentally get any epoxy over the valve holes, you can try blowing it out with butane. Carefully touch up the seam with more JB Weld. Next, you'll need a marinade injector. I got mine from Lowe's. The marinade injector has to have a lure lock needle fitting. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect the syringe valve later. Most marinade injectors have larger needles with screw threads, so make sure you find one that has a lure lock instead. Then you'll need a 60 milliliter polypropylene syringe. With a good tug, you should be able to pull the plunger out. The rubber on the plunger is a perfect fit for the marinade injector, but the plastic shaft is too large, so we'll need to cut it down to size. Leave about 5 to 10 millimeters of the shaft so the plunger can't flip around inside the injector. Once that's done, remove the rubber part and set it aside somewhere clean and dust free. Now trim at least a millimeter all around the circular plastic end so it'll fit inside the marinade injector. When that's done, reattach the rubber plunger and make sure everything fits smoothly. Finally, push the plunger up towards the tip of the injector and leave it there. Next, we're going to JB Weld the hose adapter to the injector. The hose adapter should just fit. 
sand the outside of the hose adapter and the inside of the injector. Coat both surfaces with JB Weld. Don't be shy with the JB Weld. You should probably use a bit more than I've shown here. You'll have to remove excess air so the adapter stays down. Just push down on the valve to relieve any pressure. Smooth out the excess JB Weld and leave the injector upright to cure. This is the most important part of the entire build. It's an SGE syringe valve, number 031915. This is a laboratory grade part, so you may have trouble finding one. I got this one from Sigma Aldrich, but they don't sell to individuals, so if you go that route, you'll have to create a fake company and fill out some paperwork. Try googling SGE syringe valve 031915 to find other suppliers and sellers. Let's take a look at what's going on inside the fuel chamber with this transparent model. Now in the finished version, there's going to be pressurized butane on this side of the chamber, and there'll be fuel on this side. The plunger allows the butane to exert pressure on the fuel without mixing with it. This button opens the syringe valve, which controls the flow of fuel. To reset this demonstration, I'll push the plunger back towards the bottom of the syringe with butane. I press on the valve in the back to relieve the pressure behind the plunger, while using butane to push the plunger down. Now we're going to do the same thing to the fuel chamber to reset the plunger position. Once the plunger has been pushed down, attach the syringe valve. Make sure it's in the closed position. Pressurize the chamber with butane. Now press the button. You should hear air coming out of the syringe valve. Close the syringe valve and check for leaks by putting the chamber in water. If you see bubbles around any of the seams, plug them up with more JB Weld. Once everything checks out, go ahead and depressurize the chamber by releasing the rest of the butane. And that's the lightsaber fuel chamber. To stay up to date on the next steps, make sure to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching.